All right, you're all set. Okay, good evening. I'm Darcy Dumont. I'm calling the September 17th, 2020 meeting of the, the um, Town of Amherst Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at somewhere around eight. Um, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee. I'll call on each member by name. At that time, I'll confirm that you can hear me and we can hear you. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Alyssa Brewer. Present. Darcy Dumont here. Uh, Dorothy Pam. Here. George Ryan. Present. And I'm heard that we can hear the, the town manager. Um, okay. I don't think there is are any, well, I don't know. There's seven, there is one attendee. Um, Art, if you want to give public comment, raise your hand. Doesn't look like he does. Okay, no public comment. Uh, we are just meeting for one reason tonight, and that is to look at the town manager appointments for two department heads that he's made recommendations for yesterday. Um, so we're going to be looking at the human resources director recommendation and health director. Um, we also did just get other memos regarding other committee appointments, um, which we will look at on September 24th. But, so we're just going to look at the two tonight. Um, so the first up is consideration of the town manager's recommendation for the position of health director. So I'm just going to let um, the town manager present that. Thank you. So uh, my appointment for the for your consideration for the health director is Emma Dragon. Uh, Emma Dragon is um, employed by Cooley Dickinson Hospital. She's also on the Board of Health in town of Hadley and has a lot of um, varied experience throughout the valley um, and and has is also a disaster management specialist. Uh, she, when she's gone through a pretty robust uh, interview process, and if the characteristics that people identified that they appreciated about her um, across the board with our with our interview team, which was a really terrific interview team, by the way, uh, it was, they were people driven, um, very personable, um, answered questions well. Every question was centered um, on the people that on the client that they were talking about. Um, one of the members said, "Can't go wrong here." Um, complete package, uh, top-notch nurse, um, works in stressful, is used to working in stressful situations uh, where she worked at the Javits Center, setting up one of the uh, COVID situations down there. Um, and she's a good leader because, and she listens before, um, before making decisions. She also, um, after, as being a member of the, um, the uh, Hadley Board of Health, reached out and became a member of the Massachusetts Local and Regional Public Health Advisory Committee, which I was impressed by that she made that initiative. Um, so, and a registered nurse, um, someone who I think will fit in well with our, with our community. So I'm here, hope, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Questions or comments? Um, Hi, uh, uh, George. Just a comment on the process, which I was impressed by. I thought it really was a stellar committee. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate Paul's efforts to reach out to a wide variety of people. It's not just uh, necessarily Amherst centered. I um, also appreciate the fact that given the current situation, I'm sure this is on his mind more than even mine, um, that he moved as quickly as he did. Um, it's a large number of candidates an impressive uh, interview team. 
And uh, from what I can tell, at least a very impressive candidate, but uh, kudos to Paul for putting together uh, this team, um, which I'm sure was a great help to him in making this decision. Thank you for your comment, Dorothy. I was impressed with the caliber of the candidates and that made me wonder, um, uh, cause and both holding responsible jobs, uh, at, at what the town salary is in town. Um, and is that, is that something that we can know or not? Yeah, it's, it's public information. So the salary, I don't have the salary range in, in front of me. She will be at the mid range, midpoint of the salary range. Um, we try to bring people in at the midpoint, but sometimes I think what we're learning over the last couple of years is that our salaries will need to be evaluated. Um, mm -hmm. But her salary is 85, 121. Okay. Um, and I think it is great to have somebody trained in disaster response. Um, but again, that, you know, it means that she could very well be deployed. Um, yeah. That's something that, um, um, and again, that doesn't turn me off because that keeps you cutting edge, um, being deployed and, and helping other things. So just wondered if you have backup systems in mind for that. Yeah, it's a really good question because we did explore that and it's, 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 and it's sort of like being in the National Guard. So if there's an emergency, she gets called on and she may be deployed for a couple of weeks or whatever. You know, again, we have um, you know, Jen Brown, who is our public health nurse, who's the acting health director now, feel very confident in that um, with that relationship. We also um, have a lot of strength throughout the community and, um, you know, we have um, we have several, the, the um, Jill Consolina, who, who is the nurse manager at the schools, is a public health nurse also for the town of Wilbraham. Uh, Ann Becker is a public health nurse uh, for, the, for the University of Massachusetts. Uh, we have a very tight relationship with Meredith O'Leary, who is the public health nurse in Northampton. In fact, we have her working with us to support Jen Brown, and I'm gonna keep her on uh, through December to support the transition um, for, because just because COVID is so complex um, for Emma. Um, because I think that having, um, building that team that also, not having us call um, uh, Meredith all the time and feeling like we're imposing on her now, we have a contract with her and she will be providing the services. Um, we can afford that because it's it's COVID related. And so that, that's a good thing to do. Um, and also she's very, she, it's in her best interest for us to have a very strong health director. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, and she knows Emma and uh, Jeff Harness, who was on the search committee knew her from Coley Dickinson. So I feel pretty confident in this appointment. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Alyssa. Um, I was just going to mention just earlier, I think Dorothy had said something about meeting the candidates. We never meet the candidates. That's just not a thing we do. But thank you for asking the salary question since we've literally never done that before either. Um, the comment I had is it's mentioned in here that she works at Cooley and I know that just like firefighters and police officers or firefighters in particular often have additional jobs is the intention that aside from being deployed in an emergency, that she will still be doing shifts at Cooley or is her the intention that she's a full-time worker for us? It's a really good question. Again, something we discussed. She, she is a full-time employee of the town of Amherst. Uh, she wants to retain her ability to do per diem work at uh, Cooley Dickinson on holidays or if, if there's a special need and she needs to take a vacation day or something like that. I was, we'll work through that, I think. Um, she expressed an interest in staying in the nursing field and staying as a practitioner. Um, she feels like that would help her um, service to the town. Um, but is, you know, if it's on her time, as long as it's not impacting her job with the town of Amherst, um, I'd be, have to be okay with that. Other questions or comments? I was very, very impressed with the long list of experience that she had in, in uh, disaster work. Mm -hmm. um, that was uh, very impressive. Um, so, um, well, if we don't have any other questions or comments, I guess we could move to a motion. Um, I, 
I recommend that the town council approve the town manager's recommendation to appoint Emma Dragon as health director. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, Alyssa Brewer. Um, I'm going to vote yes, but I want to make a comment for our report. And so I, but I, if, if you will entertain that later, but yes, right now we're just voting. So I'm voting yes. Okay. I am voting yes. Dorothy. Yes. George. Yes. And would you like to make your comment now, Melissa? Yes, I think it should be covered in our report, the fact that she, well, that she will be working for us full time and, and then it doesn't need to say anything else, but because the way the memo is phrased, it makes it seem like she's job sharing. So just saying she's working full time for us and then what she does on her own time, like Paul says, is what she does on her own time and that's fine. But to make it clear, she is ours full time because I know some places do have part-time health directors. Okay, moving on to the Human Resources Director. Paul, would you like to present? Sure. So um, this is Donna Ray Keneally, who I'm really excited about. Um, brings is a bundle of energy, very positive, um, has been working at Western New England University in a very variety of roles. Um, most recently as the um, Associate Director of Human Resources and Title IX Investigator, which I think is very important for us to have that skill. She is an attorney. Uh, trained attorneys, and that's a um, skill that set that she brings, which I think is very important as well. Um, you know, a, a, a enthusiastic, positive attitude, um, eagerness to take on a new challenge. Um, you know, she, she, her, uh, her supervisor at Western New England is a contemporary, so she was looking for that next step, and it wasn't going to happen at Western New England University. Um, so, uh, as a, she lives in like. Well, she lives nearby, and so this is. A, she was a really excited and has always wanted to um, work for the town of Amherst. Has been <laughs> driving by town hall. Um, um, really, again, I, I you you noted, but I'm going to go back to my interview to the screening committee. Um, we're just fortunate to have Maria Judith Rodriguez from Amherst College, who was um, just super helpful on this, and Catherine Porter from the personnel board, is, is in terms of her. A background at UMass, and they brought an outside uh, vantage that was very important to this. Um, she um, talked about, uh, you know, we, we talked in terms of HR sort of sets the tone for the organization uh, in, in terms of transparency, being accessible, building trust and relationships, um, and that uh, being fair builds credibility and uh, I think that she brings all those things. She does not have um, uh, collective bargaining, direct co collective bargaining experience. Um, we have one union contract coming up for the, for that expires June 30th of 2021, and then the rest of them happen the next year. Um, she's eager to get, become more engaged in that. She has um, has some background through classwork, uh, but was not really directly involved in that at Western New England University. Um, in our community, we have an attorney, uh, a labor lawyer who does the negotiations with us and almost every labor decision of, of consequence, we filter through our labor attorney just um, as a matter of course. Uh, so I think that we we're sort of scaffolded there to, to, do, to do that, to support that negotiations. The bigger thing that happens internally are the one-on-one -on -one kind of um, interactions with employees, grievances, things like that. We don't get a lot of grievances actually, but it's more issues that come up between employees. And um, you know, there's a lot of complex things that we're dealing with now, what we were talking about before the meeting started, um, helping employees be able to navigate COVID-19, but also be able to do their work and how, do we, how are we fair to everybody and how are we able to support our employees um, in these these types of things at these difficult times. So um, again, very, very high on um, Donna Ray and she's very excited about working for the town. Questions, um, Alyssa? 
Paul already answered my question about collective bargaining experience because as you obviously heard at the uh, last town council meeting, I work for a union part-time. My husband's in a union at UMass. And I do find that not having collective bargaining experience, you know, it's not just when it's time to do the negotiation. It's, you know, kind of an everyday perception and attitude, but it sounds like you've got it all st structured so that she'll be learning about that. As you say, she has some familiarity with it from classwork. She does have the attorney to rely on. She still has Joanne to rely on mm -hmm. and other people. So, um, you know, some, not everybody can knows everything when they start, when they start a position. So it was just that that was specifically called out in the original thing, but this was the pool that became available. And it sounds like you're very enthusiastic about her for all the other reasons. So I would not want to have that one thing stand in the way. So, and I'd like to point out one other thing is that we did open, we want to make sure that we looked out non-traditional sources you know we didn't want just we weren't requiring municipal experience i purposely opened that up and we had some really creative um interesting people who applied because we tried to put that in the job description we tried i, I tried to boost up the job description and make it uh, or the job posting to make it a little more interesting to people it's not just the normal thing that you would see um so i think that i felt comfortable that you know the things that she was dealing with at Western New England University aren't that weren't that far afield from what we were dealing with. Um, people I interviewed on from the private sector was a little bit different experience, honestly. So that, that was going to be a bigger leap. Thanks, um, George. Well, again, uh, praise to the interview committee. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, quite diverse and a lot of. I, I'm sure it was very helpful to you, and I, I'm. I'm Please, by the way, that you went out uh, to reach out to people. I think that that's impressive. Um, you, partly, I think you've answered my question, but it, it, clearly you consciously uh, were looking for people outside of those who had municipal experience. Um, so, I mean, that's the only concern I had is that, you know, but it seems that something you really were looking for. Can you, I mean, I assume you had candidates who had fairly mm -hmm. extensive municipal experience, mm -hmm. and yet you chose someone uh, deliberately who doesn't. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the thinking behind that? Um, yeah, so we did, we, you're right, we did have some people with some with municipal experience. Um, you know, this is a, um, so sometimes you, you, one of my beliefs is that you hire for attitude and you train. And uh, the people come sometimes, I don't want to disparage anybody who, uh, the municipal experience drives you in a certain direction and it, it has you thinking a certain way. I think we're trying to get HR moving in a different, in a, in a it's HR is not a creative field, but it, it does need to be a people, it's a people position. And that's what really what I, what I was looking for, someone who's going to um, be connecting with people in a lot more personal, direct, one-on-one -on -one way than we had been recently. Thank you. Um, Dorothy? Um, how common is it to have somebody in this position also be a lawyer? I, I was a little bit surprised by that, but I mean, maybe, maybe this isn't unusual. I don't know. No, it's unusual. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not, that's not the norm. Okay. But you I gave a good answer as to why she would leave where she was doing well okay mm -hmm. yeah i would say that could only help her though when she's dealing with the regulations and mm -hmm. so um yeah i i have a, a just a general question that doesn't really necessarily pertain to this application but i'm just interested to know if um when the town when when a person applies to the town, um, they submit a cover letter and um, is there an application form to fill out? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there, is there uh, anything in addition to the application form? Uh, sometimes we'll require a writing sample. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking because 25 years ago, I applied to teach in the Amherst Public Schools. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, had to, I had to fill out an additional form about um, my commitment to multicultural education. 
in my ex experience in multicultural education. I, and I'm guessing that they still do that. <laughs> so um, I, I, I kind of like the idea of, um, of somehow adding to our application process some kind of a screen. It's not really a screen, but just sort of a um, statement of a person's experience in our goal areas. So like in racial equity, in climate, you know, what's their climate lens? Um, and so that we can get, because this is a person who's going to be maybe doing training of staff in that area, mm -hmm. racial equity or climate or whatever, you know, doing, talking to all the department staff or, um, and so I guess my point, and, and I'm, I, I do wonder what questions were asked about those things. Um, and, you know, how do you get at that? Whether this would be a person who would be able to train in those areas. Yeah, I don't think we were hiring a trainer um, in those areas. Um, so some of the questions that were asked by the interview team are, how would your vision for this position be aligned with this town's commitment to equity and diversity? Um, I saw that, so that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And talk about mentorship. Yeah, so I guess my, my point is just that I, I'd like to see us moving in the direction of of having the all the applicants across the board make, have... Yeah, no, it's an interesting idea. I mean... Statement like they're required to do for the school department. You know, yeah. they really have to... It's amazing the hoops that you need to go through to get a job yeah. in schools. Um, so so one, one of the other questions is Amherst greatly values the cultural diversity of its employees and residents. Describe your approach to attracting candidates from different cultural backgrounds. So yeah. those are the questions that the interview team came up with and before they did the interviews, they had a set list of questions that they asked everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, does anybody have any other questions? I see Alyssa has her hand up. Find my unmute button, thank you. Um, it's been a while since we did a department head, Paul, so mm -hmm. process-wise, we need a copy of the posting that went up because the charter, I know the charter doesn't require this, but what the charter does require, as you know, is it says that the vacancy notice needed to be published for 14 days. So we should have a copy of that in the packet just so that one, people can see that yes, there was 14 days notice provided. Obviously it was a lot more than 14 days in both cases. And um, so it should be dated. It should not just be the thing somebody drafted to have put on the website. It should be the actual archived item from the website. Yeah. And then the other reason is, right, is that creative wording you use, we could have seen that and that would have helped us with the support that you just gave us, of, you know, what you were looking for, right? Because yeah. unless we to those notices, which indeed we can do. Um, we can subscribe to those notices like any member of the public can. Um, I didn't keep it then when that happened. And so if you could attach that to the packet for when the town council sees it, that'd be really helpful to everybody, I think. Plus, show off your creativity. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, so, okay. Well, I think we're ready to move on this one too. Um, I move to recommend that the town council approve the town manager's recommendation for appointment of Donna Rake Keneally for the position of human resources director. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Alyssa Brewer. Yes. Darcy Dumont. Yes. Uh, Dorothy Pan. Yes. George Ryan. Yes. Okay, so we have two unanimous votes to go to the town council for the Monday, September 21st meeting. Um, 
Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, and yes, we'll look at the other appointments next just, Thursday. So just a late breaking news, the, tonight the Conservation Commission appointed their person to the CPA committee is gonna be Anna Devlin Gothier. Um, so they're gonna have a change of people on the, um, so once I get that in writing from the, I'll, I'll amend the CPA uh, um, appointment. So you'll have the complete list for the CPA committee then. Okay, great. Um, all right, so moving on, we have no presentations or discussion items. We are not approving any minutes. Um, I don't have any announcements. Does anyone have any announcements? Good. Um, the next meeting agenda, um, we're going to have uh, those appointments that we mentioned. We're going to hear um, a preliminary presentation about Lincoln Avenue slash parking. Do we know if we're having any staff presentations on that evening? No, they're non planned. It's just a okay. presentation by the two sponsors and a document uh, in the packet for people to read in advance. Okay, great. Um, and Evan's going to be chairing that meeting. And uh, you, am I correct, Darcy? You have a wedding, is that correct? Yeah, my son's getting married the next day. We're having the wow. dinner at that time. So, all right. Well, yeah. congratulations. Where is that taking place? In my backyard. Oh, it's here now. Okay, just place. Yeah, it's only just FYI. In case you think I'm having a big crowd, it's <laughs> nine people. They're all isolating for two weeks in advance of the wedding. Mm. My son is like two miles away, but I don't get to see him for two weeks. And um, we are also all getting tested. So, like, you going to Holyoke? Because you can, you can now yeah, get it. I went to Holyoke Community College, and I am, I'm negative. Um, so, yeah, and everybody's getting tested. So we're like, nobody can complain about us. <laughs> so, but why are you missing the meeting? Until all hours. We can <laughs> Why am I missing the meeting? <laughs> just take, just turn on the Zoom, you know, join in. Yeah, not that hard. I'm going to miss the Monday meeting too. Is my well, I, can, I can tell Winston that he doesn't have to worry about this then. He can, he can stay home uh, that night. He doesn't have to <laughs> go over there and check things out. Yes. If, that's if only my that favorite. dog would stay that cute forever. Pardon? Yeah. <laughs> the dog is so cute, but he's going to turn into a big dog. He's going to be a big boy when he grows up. So. Is that Winston? Oh, I didn't realize who Winston was. Winston is that absolutely adorable, huge. I'm, actually, I'm told he actually outranks Laramie. So, uh, <laughs> um, anyway, that's. I think that's all that's going to be on the agenda on the 24th, and then we're going to take up the surveillance technology bylaw on the 8th, which they did divide in half, and they're going to just bring the facial um, recognition piece of it to the October 8th meeting. So, um, if there are no items anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance, um, I could ask a question. Yeah. George had his hand up first. That, oh, was, that was goodbye. That was. Oh, it's uh, not time for goodbye, George. Oh, Sorry. Alyssa does have her hand up, though. Oh, Do you have, have her hand up? Alyssa? I just want to make sure the report says that we're adding the job description. I mean, the, the job posting. It's not the job description at all. That's absolutely factually incorrect. The vacancy notice per the charter is being added for the town council packet because you're going to be writing the TSO report possibly before they see that. So. Okay. Um, forward to seeing it. And that was all. And Dorothy, did you have a comment? I, I, I had a question for Paul, but I'll ask him afterwards. Okay. I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Good Thank night. you. What time it is? 8.31. Good yeah. night. So, so, Paul, I'll just say <laughs> There seems to be some confusion about whether TSO is going to be, be resuming or not resuming. And I did send you, forwarded you a letter from Tracy about two weeks ago. And I didn't hear back. And I think she's talking said, about TAC, actually. TAC. I, I said yep. the wrong thing every time. Yep. I'm just, you have to just read my mind, not what I say. TAC, yes. Mm -hmm. And she wrote another letter today. And, and um, um, is this, 
because I guess she quoted Guilford as saying she thought that it wasn't going to resume because the council wanted to be involved. And Lynn's answer, which was in the mail she sent to me, was she didn't know about that. So is there something here that we should know, or is it just that it was hard getting the committees back up because of the technology? Um, I don't think we're... Um, I'm not sure where I need to talk to the council about what it wants TAC to be doing for them okay. in terms of and because there are a lot of questions before and if they want TAC to be supporting those questions what's going to go to them with that we've never sorted that out and I haven't asked the council to do that so um, that's just something we need to make happen. Yeah I just have a general comment is that a lot of us are feeling pretty overworked and there's some knowledgeable people on tax. So if there's mm -hmm. a way to spread the work around, I'm for it. That's just my general position. Mm -hmm. If it makes it more complicated, which is what you're suggesting, maybe there's complications, then, you know, I think- No, it, it yeah, it, I mean like, yeah. So, so we can talk about this in, um, in, in terms of what the council wants to, what you would want the tax to do, right? What, if you want that to be making recommendations on, Lincoln Ave parking and or whatever it is, you know, what or you know, what or studies that need to happen or something like that. Um, Nancy, I would need to know what it has done in the past, mm -hmm. just to have an idea of the kinds of things that it's dealt with. Um, and then I, I think we'd have a better idea of gee, is there an overlap with TSO or is this helpful to TSO or you know, because TSO didn't exist and I, I you know, so I, before I could answer any of those questions, I'd need to know a little bit more about what it has done. Yeah, so I, I think there's, you know, it, we're, again, we're learning like about zoning, how, you know, do, do we have committees, you know, we had the zoning subcommittee and there's some question, and, and I know the council is working that through with the planning board in terms of who's responsible for what, and who's, who's supposed to be delving into that. that. So I think it's the same thing with some of these other things. So that's sort of where, um, Frankly, we're not really sure where, how the county, I think you're still figuring out things out how you want things to work and so are we. And um, I'm hesitant, you know, I was hesitant to, to take things to the TAC um, if it was gonna be in the in the council's prerogative and all the public way stuff is. And so again, I think, you know, the the Lincoln Ave thing was, was, a, was a, a learning point for us in terms of what is tax role in, in Lincoln Ave, should it have gone to them or not? And so, um, you know. Well, I guess I thought they did with buses and I, I just, I guess I hope that the council doesn't have to deal with buses. I just, there's just so much we're dealing with. Yeah, it just seems like there's a lot of, a lot of um, district issues having to do with um, traffic in all the different districts, you know. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I sent a list of like seven different issues about District 5 to tech, and now they're just out in the, you know, they're, we don't, you know, they're just not being dealt with. Yeah. So, um, anyway, yeah, I'm interested in this issue too, Paul. Yeah. Um, I think we could send along the TAC charge to the town council. Paul, that might just be a simple way of starting it and saying yeah. questions have been raised about the role of the tech, obviously with the pandemic, people were not meeting, et cetera, and how they're gonna interface with TSO moving forward and just go ahead and send them the charge. And, um, and then because some people don't even realize what the charge says, right? And also how it evolved over time because yeah. it used to be other committees. And I know that some of the members are gonna say, look, you already took away this committee, this committee and this committee, but there is probably a way that we can farm some work out to them. But then we have to make those lines as to who do people come to Darcy? Like, do they come to you as a town yeah. council? Do they go to TAC? Where do they go? Yeah, it's not clear. It's not clear. It's never been clear. So that's nothing new. So. Yeah. We, we can make it, we can start making it be clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that would be good if we had some kind of line of communication. Yes. All right. Um, I, my little cursor is on end meeting for all. <laughs> hovering, hovering, like the little bee coming in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm late. So right. much power. All right. See you. <laughs>